Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm going to be going through six supplements for Shadow Dark. That's a fun alliteration to say. Six supplements for Shadow Dark, starting with Borderlands, which is Letters from the Dark Volume 4. This just came out. I've reviewed Letters from the Dark Volumes 1, 2, and 3, and they're great. Uh, volume 4 is no exception. It is awesome just as well. This is by far the biggest supplement that I'm going to be covering today. Uh, but I also wanted to cover another few that I really, really like, especially this uh, document called Conversion Principles. It's just called Shadow Dark Conversion Principles. It's by Sursa Victory, who I love. I've reviewed uh, various adventures by Sursa Victory, and uh, I just love them all. This is brilliant. Everybody who designs for Shadow Dark needs to read this document. Absolutely read it. It just has a bunch of brief little principles that you should use when you're going into uh yeah when you're going into designing a shadow dark adventure and i i think it's brilliant absolutely fantastic um the and then i'm going to be going through three very short these are three or four pages uh short supplements that you can find on drive through rpg these are all pay what you want called shadow spark and these are essentially little additions to the game there's this rule for flickering torches or these this idea of a new way of doing torches and the torch timer in shadow dark which is kind of cool there's skeletal foes and ways of kind of doing some extra skeletons and, and extra variations on that, which I like, especially since I've been doing um, Curse of Strahd for Shadow Dark, so I'm really interested in the undead and in undead supplements for it. And then Strange Threats, which is a really cool little book of, this is six pages, of weird things that you can throw into your game that are non-conventional threats the players have to face. And finally, I want to cover a supplement called Seasons in Shadow. This is optional community rules for Shadow Dark. Now, I'm not using this in my game. I haven't used this at the table, but I, I really like it, and I think it fits with the general design idea of Shadow Dark. Um, so I'll put links below to where you can get all these, but let's start off with Letters from the Dark, Volume 4, Borderlands. This is obviously inspired by Keep on the Borderlands. It's very much uh, in that design. You'll see that there is a, a West Marches uh, idea in here with a dungeon or a set of dungeons that are all very much inspired by the Caves of Chaos. It, it's, if not, just kind of like an homage to the Caves of Chaos. Um, or kind of just a, another version, almost, of the Caves of Chaos, <laughs> if you will. Um, get a great introduction by Rex Dangerous. I love that. Uh, I love the, the various introductions in each of these letters from the dark. They're really, really fun. You get a good rundown of what you're going to get in this adventure, along with great art. And there's great art throughout this entire book. Uh, yeah, love that piece. Love that piece. And there's a bunch of good ones like that throughout the entire book. With some new rules. Uh, new hireling rules, and I kind of like these rules. Now, this, these aren't going to apply to every table. Not everybody's going to like regular hireling rules here, but um, I think they're fun, and it's good to have it in, a, in an OSR game uh, as an optional idea for doing more detailed hireling rules and stuff like that. It's kind of cool. D20 table for hireling traits. I really like the hireling trait table from Castles and Tillin, and I use that mostly when I use hirelings, but this is a great one. Um, yeah, this is a great one. You get mercenaries and how mercenaries work. They're different than hirelings. These are experienced uh, and capable, and they are much higher level. Now, one of the things you get or you can get, uh, it doesn't come with this, um, is a, I think it's a 24-page document full of pre-made mercenary characters that you can you can get on uh, on Drive Through RPG. And, um, I might link below. I'm, I don't think I'll link below to that because that's a different document. But I do also have that one. I like it. It's not as good as this um, because it really just is added on to this. Uh, how to pay them, what to include there, loyalty checks, betrayal, how that works, and how they betray you. I love that. Um, mercenary stats, and they level up differently than regular classes. And they have their own their own stats. So here's an example, and then you get a bunch more examples as you go through. Um, you have 48, that's right. So Letters from the Dark Mercenaries contains 48 pre-generated mercenaries and a random table to select them. Uh, and there's uh, really good art for each one. This one just has a few uh, examples. Sample mercenaries. Uh, Moral Tula, Nira Trill, Zekka, Bara Garok, uh, Haru Tenderfoot, Cull of the Grosh. I like that. Uh, some really interesting ones there. Anger Root. And then the rules for keeps. How to start a keep and, uh, yeah, some stats for it. How to defend it. Uh, all of those ideas. You know, having a keep, a stronghold, it's very much in the tradition of old school D&D. And, uh, you know, I don't think there really are any clear rules for that in Shadow Dark. So it's nice to see an extra, you know, an extra thing added in here um, just to help you if you want to go down that kind of way. I don't know if this is the most fleshed out or the best 
version of keep rules that I've ever seen, but they're certainly sufficient. And they're good if you want to not do a ton of keep stuff while also having keeps in your game. I think that's great. And rules for how to enhance it. Now this is something I might do, not just for a keep, but for like a, oh, I don't know, like a, an adventurer's guild tower or something like that. Like I could see taking these rules for the enhancing and adding them into a regular campaign for like a West Marches or something like that and have different players have to contribute to the to the upkeep of the keep or of the guild hall or whatever it is. I think that would be really cool and you could adapt that pretty easily. Tips for running adventurers in the Borderlands. Uh, GM philosophy, and I like these too. How do you, how do you present hooks in these sorts of games? Uh, how to I you know how to think about the conflict between law and chaos, uh, not colonizers, ruins, <laughs> uh, all of those idea. Core tenets of West Marches gameplay, uh, scheduling and journaling. I think this is good advice. You can find a lot of this, uh, a lot of good advice. I should say not this advice, but a lot of good advice online for free. If you just are interested in getting West March's advice, you probably find that better elsewhere. But this is really good to include if, I would say, if you're inspired to run this particular adventure or these particular rules or take this particular thing, then this is good advice to have in this book. Absolutely. And there's a lot of good advice here. A lot of good advice. Great art. Ooh, I love that. Love that one too. On Borderlands, an introductory adventure for first level characters. Uh, this is great. Uh, you have Darlin Keep, and then you have a brief Borderlands hex crawl, which is mostly blank, which is really cool, so you could take it and fill it out yourself. There is, turn your head a little bit, it's mostly a blank region, and that's really great. So you have the Caves of Kausi, or Kausi, uh, instead of Chaos, <laughs> the Caverns of Kaos. Uh, I don't know how to say that, but I would imagine it's some relation to the word Chaos. And then you just have a, bit, a bunch of blank hexes, so you can print this off and use this in your own game. It would be really cool. Um, or you could just have the players fill it out, right? Print it out and give it to them. You have your own and they have to fill out their own. The, all they have is the river, the caverns, and the starting keep. They start off with a cool handout. Always a fan of handouts. You could either just print this off or you could make it up yourself uh, with some randomization tables, crawling tables, uh, tips for the whole thing, a map of the keep or maps of the keep as well as a breakdown of it. And then the caverns. Uh, an easily defensible cave system located in a valley in the borderlands. So uh, very clearly, as you'll see, uh, Caves of Chaos here. Here are the different factions of it, and there's lots of them. Classic factions for a Caves of Chaos-style adventure. Cultists, lizard folk, Deep Ones, Monsters, Gnolls, Orcs, Goblinoids, and Zombies. And then the cavern layout, and you can easily see, right? <laughs> highly, highly influenced, if not lifted. I mean, not lifted exactly, but very, very heavily influenced by the Caves of Chaos. Um... It's not lifted, obviously. It's a different map. I like this one quite a bit. They're connected, which is cool. All connected, for the most part. Yeah, they're all connected, which uh, is is not necessarily... I don't think that's true in the Caves of Chaos, that some of the caves are just sort of standalone. There's an upside and a downside to having those standalone caves. You know, you, can, you don't have to always think about them as connected to everything else. Um, some people don't like the Caves of Chaos simply because of the idea of the Monster Hotel, right? Why are all of these creatures living here? Uh, and there's a little bit of that here, but if you're playing a Caves of Chaos campaign, you probably don't care too much about that, your players probably don't care too much about that, or you can come up with reasons why all of these monsters are here. And, you know, there are reasons given here for why the creatures might be here, to some degree. Great piece of art. Give this to your players. Just absolutely give this to your players so that they have a visual of what the Little Valley looks like. Um, so helpful. So helpful with the entrances marked on it. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely a fan of that. And then you get a breakdown of what's outside, as well as breakdowns for each of the locations with good maps. I love there's a gel cube that can drop down, gelatinous cube. Um, fantastic traps. Really clear breakdowns of the dungeons. Things are mostly on two-page spread, so that if you did print it off, or if you bought, I think there's a physical copy. Um, uh, if you printed it off, uh, or just had it out, you'd be able to get to your, your map pretty quickly on a two-page spread. Really great art there. Really great art of the rooms, of the traps, of the things that you're dealing with, and then, of course, the compatibility and legal. And then the next issue, uh, information about the next issue, which is Hell to Pay, which is you sold your soul to a devil, time to steal it back. So there's a Hell Heist, which is a mega dungeon spanning the nine circles of Hell. Contracts, rules for making deals with devils, the Diabolist, and new devils, including the Crocodilian Aguar, which is really cool. A great... Uh, addition to the Letters from the Dark zine set. So, highly recommend checking this one out by Chris Powell. I'll put links below to where you can get it. 
Okay, the next one I wanted to cover, as I said, is the Conversion Principles by Sursa Victory. Now, this is a free document on itch.io, uh, and I think you can probably get it on Sursa's webpage, although I'm not sure about that, but I'll put the link where you can get it. This is just free. It is a fantastic document. I'm just going to run through it in its entirety because this advice is really, really good. First of all, it's broken down into categories. Time, darkness, gear, danger, stat checks and information, honor, character, investment, unpredictability, other considerations. So it has, it's a very short document, only four pages. It's a breakdown of the major different themes of Shadow Dark as a game. And one of the first ones is time. So when you're converting games from other systems to Shadow Dark, or if you're designing your own adventures, how do you think about time? Well, random encounters, first of all. If you don't have them in a dungeon from a different adventure, add them in if you're gonna play Shadow Dark properly. Identify opportunities to present time-based trade-offs to the characters. That is, characters can perform some optional action for a potential benefit, but at a cost of time. Great. Identify opportunities to increase the danger level, or identify opportunities to decrease the danger level. Right, the danger level is one of the things that Shadow Dark does really well. It has this idea of how dangerous is the dungeon in a in a set way. Instead of just being case by case basis, this on this level of the dungeon, roll a you know roll every three turns. On this level of the dungeon, roll every two turns. On this level of the dungeon, roll. It just says danger level. And that way you know, and the players know, okay, we're playing with this idea of a danger level. It can go up and it can go down. That's great. A danger level, incorporating that into the design of a dungeon, really good idea. Darkness, add explicit light darkness notation to dungeon delving areas. Identify opportunities to just diminish or extinguish light sources as a result of character failures. Identify and remove effects that grant characters dark vision, infra vision, low light vision, etc. Just, you know, dark darkness has to be a part of the game, and if your adventure that you're, you're adjusting to Shadow Dark doesn't have that, think about it. Gear, how do you think about gear in a dungeon? Well, how do you make it fit with the Shadow Dark design philosophy, right? That's why I love this. So many people, when they design adventures, think in like, a couple of ways. One is, they think in terms of um, 5e <laughs> nowadays, right? And then they just convert stat blocks over and they're like, done. I've converted the stat blocks over. Maybe I've even changed the monsters that I'm using. And now the dungeon is, it works for Shadow Dark. I've changed the magic items to the Shadow Dark equivalents. And I'm good, I'm all set. And that's just so not right, right? That's one way of looking at it because you miss so much there in design philosophy. It's not cohesive, it's not a unified thing. And the other way is that people will design sort of generic OSR adventures. And that's fine. I love system neutral adventures, I love them. But that misses what, what system neutral adventures miss and what just if you just simply, uh, you know, just take what's written and put stat blocks on it or something like that, what that misses is the opportunities to capitalize on what makes your game of choice excellent, right? And that's what Shadow Dark, Shadow Dark has things that make it excellent, as does 5e, as does oh well, Old School Essentials, as does Labyrinth Lord, as does Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And the goal when you design with those games, for those games, or when you convert to those games, should be to maximize what makes that system excellent. And, and that's why I love this document. It maximizes, uh, it helps you to think about what makes Shadow Dark excellent and to capitalize on that and maximize it. So highly recommend this uh, document here. I will again put a link below to where you can get this. Just everybody should read this. If you're interested in running for Shadow Dark, honestly, even if you're not interested in running for Shadow Dark and you just want to get a sense of what Shadow Dark's about, or you just are curious about some of these things, just download this. Again, it's free. Read through it once. It's such a good document. Highly recommend. Conversion Principles. Okay, the, the, I want to go through the Shadow Spark documents pretty quickly. They are fairly short, so this is not going to take too much time. But I really like them. They are, these are pay what you want on DriveThruRPG. So just take a look at them, and if you like them, if you want to use the ideas, you know, go over there, download it, uh, you know, pick, give it a dollar or two, and, uh, and I think you'll really, really uh, benefit from them. First is the idea of the, the, the tower, the flickering torch tower. Uh, you have this tumbling block, basically Jenga, right? But I don't know one ever uses that name because it's copyrighted. I, I, it's one of those things, I don't think, I think you're allowed to use the name of a product when you're describing the product in documents without it being copyrighted material. People always do it with Dungeons & Dragons, right? They say the world's most popular role-playing game. I think you can just say Dungeons & Dragons. I, I might be totally wrong about that, so this is not legal advice, and, you know, <laughs> if Wizards of the Coast comes after you, which they have been known to do, before saying Dungeons & Dragons when you're designing a, you know, a game that's proficient or that's, that's, that's you know, works with 5e, you know, don't, don't blame me. But I, I just, you know, it's always funny to see that. I, I think that's fair to say. But anyway, it just says a tumbling block tower. But, you know, we all know what Jenga is. And, uh, and I guess there are other, there probably are other, you know, non-name brand versions of Jenga. 
But the idea is every time you're in a situation where uh, the the torch would be flustered, right? You remove a block. So that is, uh, uh, once the tower is built, you roll a d4 and move that many block from within the tower to the top. Then you proceed. So you start off with it being a little uncertain. If you're wounded, if you attack, if the person holding the torch attacks, right? Or the person holding the torch is wounded. Or if the area is breezy. Or if something happens, right? If some crazy things happens, you pass the torch between players. You, whatever it is, you remove blocks, right? And then as the, the Jenga tower gets closer and closer to falling, then it collapses. Now, one of the things you say is what happens if you light a new torch, right? You could you could make this a meta mechanic. There, there are yeah, advice further on about what to do there. Uh, but... Um, you could think of this as like a meta mechanic that when the torch, when the when the lantern breaks or falls out, uh, or, or when the Jenga tower falls, or whatever, then your torch goes out, and so uh, you know whatever that, whatever the situation is, the torch goes out. So maybe you've lit a new torch. Maybe the new torch allows you to take some blocks and move them, or allows you to, you know, who knows what. But you could come up with rules, and there are some there's some advice in here for it, right? Time still matters. The tower falls. Attack the light, and how to how to work how to work this. But it's an interesting. It's, I always like systems that, that try something new, try something interesting, and to build a different sort of side minigame almost while you're playing a game. I always like those sorts of things. And the idea of doing it with a Jenga block tower, having that tension, especially as darkness really matters in Shadow Dark, I think that's really cool. So this is a great document, great idea. I hope uh, you guys check it out. And I, you know, I might try this out for like a one shot. I don't know if I'd do this for a longer term campaign. First of all, I play online mostly. And so it's a lot harder to do in an online environment. Not impossible, but harder to do. And uh, and so, yeah, I would say if you're playing at an in-person table, this would be a cool thing to try out. The next one is Skeletal Foes. This is just basically a bestiary, of just a few monsters for really, of just four new skeletons and ways to use them. And they're pretty simple. There's the basic skeleton stat block and then a couple, min, you know, like minion skeletons, skeleton skirmishers. I think there's a skeletal archer. There's a skeletal, oh, there's five creatures. There's a skeletal bard. And then there's a skeletal like devastator who is a little bit stronger. Uh, the bard and the devastator are kind of like, well, the skeletal devastator, the last one is really strong. And the uh, bard is like kind of, it's strong. It's not as mili it's not as mechanically strong as the skeleton from the basic stat block, but it's a force multiplier. And so as long as it's around, uh, it's a lot, you know, the other skeletons are a lot harder. Now, the idea is just ways of incorporating skeletons into your low-level adventures or higher-level adventures than the standard Shadow Dark skeleton, which is fairly hard uh, at low levels if you wanted to throw a bunch of skeletons at your party, right, which is kind of a, an iconic image if you wanted to do that as a low-level party. It's hard to do in Shadow Dark just because each skeleton is pretty tough. 13 AC, 11 hit points. That's going to take a couple turns, as long, assuming they're not turned and destroyed, because they can be turned and destroyed uh, really easily in Shadow Dark, right? Um, but assuming they're not turned and destroyed, then uh, then they can you know really overwhelm a party quickly. So having a bunch of level zero essentially skeletons, it's a cool idea, and that's what you get in the rest of this document. So again, I highly recommend checking that out, especially if you like the idea of throwing hordes of skeletons at your low-level party. The next one that I wanted to cover is Strange uh, Threats, which is essentially extra stuff that you can throw at your party, extra you know monsters and uh, strange encounters that aren't just typical fights. So this idea of attacking the light and how you might want to use that, tendrils of inky darkness, which you know do some awful things. You can't you can't just kill them. They're not really like monsters. It's more of like a hazard, but it's a kind of cool hazard. There's this idea of bizarre bugs, so like merchants' bugs, which are coin piles that are actually bugs. Spell mosquitoes, which drain, which don't drain, but they prevent magic users, magic users from casting spells. That's kind of cool. Um, and they're not really a monster, so you don't like target them. There's a swarm of mosquitoes. Like, how do you target a swarm of mosquitoes? Well, you can do it with fireball, but if they're spell mosquitoes, well, then what do you do? It's kind of a cool idea. Um, then you get corrupted spell books, grasping vines. So it's just a, a bunch of cool, interesting creatures. Not creatures exactly, but again, uh, hazards that you can throw at your party. It's outside the norm, not just monsters, but really cool, flavorful ideas to throw at a party. And then finally, Seasons in Shadow, which is again, this optional rules for communities in Shadow Dark. And it's really simple, but it's sort of like downtime stuff that you can do. You, you First of all, you invest money into starting it out. And then maybe there's a circumstance that allows you to get some bonus. And then you roll and you get a result from that investment and that extra work. And, you know, you get some benefits from it. 
It's going to increase the power level a little bit of your party because, you know, you, you get some benefits from doing a community, but it's kind of cool. You do have to spend some XP to do it. Um, but you get XP from investing in the community. You can spend half of it. So it's, yeah, it's just a different side of the game, and it's going to add some stuff into it. But you kind of be, I don't know, it's kind of cool. You can become a, a member of the town and start this community. I, I, you know, that's another one of those. It goes along with the uh, Letters of the Dark keep rules. I think you could do both of these in tandem, and it would be a lot of fun. And then there's some community events that you can do, and some of them are really dangerous, like fighting a dragon. It's a really short little uh, document here, but I'd check it out. And certainly as like the starting point to uh, extra community rules that you want to build in for your own campaign, this would be a great place to start. I just thought it was really cool, and uh, I hope it is of interest to you. Well, guys, that will do it for this video. Seasons in Shadow, the three Shadow Spark little documents here, the Shadow Dark Conversion Principles, and Letters from the Dark, Volume 4. The Borderlands. Highly recommend all of these products. And uh, yeah, I hope this has been interesting. And I'll see you guys in another video.